of the front passenger in a car uh, in a head-on collision and ended up breaking both my legs. It took about four years, about 14, 15 operations. I thought at least maybe I'll never ride again, but I need to be able to walk and live life. For British dressage rider Sonna Murray-Brown, the road to international competition hasn't been the smoothest of journeys. I left school at 16 and went straight into the industry, I suppose, working um, as a groom, as a working rider, and tried to just, uh, you know, build up a career and, um, you know, learn from various professionals. But I saw this one guy riding um, when I was about 17, and he was a dressage rider, and I just thought, wow, look at that, you know, that looks incredible. I thought, right, I want to learn how to do that. So I got myself a job in a dressage yard. Following a promising start to life as a dressage rider, Sonna's career was suddenly put on hold. I um, was still a young rider at the time and I hadn't, you know, done a lot of dressage competition, but I'd had a really good year beforehand, won my first national title. And I kind of went from elementary to pre-St. George pretty rapidly. I did the, a show in early January, which was like a first kind of selection show. And I won that on one horse and was fifth, I think, with the other. And then, uh, yeah, the next day I was involved in a, as a front passenger in a car uh, in a head-on collision um, and ended up breaking both my legs. It took about four years, uh, about 14, 15 operations. I thought at least maybe I'll never ride again, but I need to be able to walk and live life. And two years after the crash, uh, I still had a non-union fracture in my, my right leg. Unfortunately, the, the break was really, really bad and um, in a very difficult place, uh, you know, by my knee to operate and stuff. And, there was just various um, problems um, along the way. We actually made a lot of effort to find a new surgeon. So he, he said I need another two years, and that was a real hard point. I'd just spent two years in recovery, and, and I thought, God, I've got to do this all over again. But we went right back to basics, and um, he uh, did a whole new um, operation and put an external frame on my leg and slowly it, you know it began to heal and and get better when I first got back riding I um, it was nice because I could just enjoy my horse you know the, there was no pressure or anything and it kind of took me back to the beginning of just going out riding and riding up on the South Downs and you know just being alone with my horse and no pressure of competitions or anything. And he was coming back from injury, I was coming back from injury. It was, it was kind of a little bit like it was, it was meant to be, you know? And I do sometimes feel like I'm a little bit behind because I had those four years out. Then I had another year last year because unfortunately I had an accident, a horse fell on my leg and broke my leg again. <laughs> um, you know, I have a really good horse now and um, I'm enjoying it. I'm at a level that I've always aspired to be at. My horse, Earl and Tance, or um, we all call him Early, uh, he is such a trier. He gives 110% all the time. He's just, he's just great. He's so easy to deal with every day, and he's a pleasure to ride and a pleasure to have on the yard. And, you know, he's got so much talent. I hope that he can go in the ring and, you know, show what he's really oh. capable of. I'm going to give it my best shot next year to try and give everyone a run for their place for the Olympics. I, I know my horse is good enough. You know, hopefully we can prove ourselves and keep performing and keep improving and, um, you know, hopefully um, get a slot and the team. If I don't make it, then I'll, you know, hopefully give the next year a shot and um, keep enjoying riding at the bigger shows and I want to just keep improving as a rider and hopefully have many more horses at um, you know International Grand Prix and hopefully one day um, you know represent my country.